How you going, guys? Just a review on the SE Ashley Game King knife. I've had this a few months and processed a few uh, deer with it. Uh, comes with this nice leather sheath. Um, it's quite thick as well. Big uh, belt loop here. Um, really well made. Made in the USA. Uh, there's no um, blood hole, but I don't see the need for that. Um, rides nice and low, so if you take a fall in the bush, um, it doesn't dig into you. This, so uh, I've taken a few falls. I usually wear uh, this knife on the hip between five and sort of eight hours when I'm out, so it's really comfortable. It's been in the wet, no issues. I did um, condition this with uh, lanolin, so um, you get a spray in Australia and conditioned all that, as well as the, uh, the handle itself. Now that's the knife. Uh, three and a half inch blade, I think uh, a four inch um, handle from memory. Four and a half inch handle. So overall, it's about eight inches roughly just over. So yeah, really impressed with this knife. Um, I put it up against the uh, Cold Steel Pendleton Hunter that I've, I've done a review on and um, that, that is a great knife, but um, this one beat it quite convincingly as well. Um, again, what I say is just my opinion, guys. So just take it with a grain of salt. Just um, so you can sort of see the coating on it there. It's individually numbered. It's got the Rowan heat treat. Um, and a guy called Ashley designed this knife, collaboration with uh, Essie. Many thanks um, for both of those guys doing that because uh, this is a knife I've been I've been looking for uh, for a long time now. Um, in the hand, it's just superb. All these Makata grips, especially when the hands are bloody, you don't slip off, especially with this guard, the size of that guard there. You know, when you wanna zip up that way, um, you know, choke up, however you wanna do it, hold it back here to get your eye fillets out if you have to reach in. Um, it just worked in every way. Now the 1095 steel held up superbly uh, for one large deer, which is equivalent to uh, about an elk in the USA. Um, probably would have done more, but just a slight strop. Um, I just use this strop here, um, and just a bit of crayon here. So yeah, five minutes, it's pretty much done. So it's popping hairs again. So um, spine thickness, I'm not sure about the thickness or the weight. You guys will probably have to look that up. I'm, I'm not with that technical with the uh, the weight and the um, spine thickness on the knives, but yeah, just absolutely. Um, superb knife um, even the way it's shaped here you can see the design of it um, the point it sort of meets in the middle so when you you know going up that way um, the pop the uh, the pop the belly open to remove the um, the organs um, it doesn't pierce you can pierce it if you if you if you're not careful but it's a lot better design than say um, the mora in my opinion as a as a, a pure Watering, you know, um, skinning knife, but this this is a great knife. I uh, wouldn't sell this one. This I keep this in my pack. It's light and it's it's just it's a beautiful knife. It's sharp. It's a more a C carbon version. Um, so it's, that's three and a half inch blade as well, which I prefer these days. Just quickly while I've got it here, that's your Canadian uh, four inch blade belt knife. Um, really good knife. That stays in my pack as well. So that and the more a C. Uh, they're my two backup knives, light. Um, this is uh, exceptional um, design. Uh, it's four inch, um, but it doesn't feel like a big knife, just the design of it. It's, um, I think I'm gonna um, get a Knives of Alaska Yukon in a similar design, test that. So um, another knife to compare while we're here is, um, is the uh, Blackjack 125 Heavy Hunter. This used to be my go-to knife for years and um, it's quite a good knife, but I did. I just recently sold this. Uh, I'm going to move it. Um, when you compare, you know, this knife here to this knife here, it's evident. Well, for me anyway, um, it's just it gets hung up here as well. When you're, uh, it's a great knife though. This one, don't get me wrong. And it's A2 steel, um, leather stacked handle. You know, bark river knife. So it's it's a good knife. I'm not wild about the convex edge. You know, that some guys might balk at that, but I just like my B grinds like that. Um, happy with the V grinds, um, Scandi grind. I think this one here, I think it's similar to a Scandi, isn't it? Or very close. Um, so that's good as well. And yeah, same with your Canadian belt. They just strop up so easy. That was really easy to strop up. All of them are really easy to strop up. This this one, obviously, with your convex um, 
you're probably a little bit um, holds an edge, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not really a massive fan of convex edges, but a lot of people are, which is um, a good thing. Um, you can remove these handles uh, by the looks of it. I haven't. Again, I sprayed all this with lanolin in sort of in here as well, so it just protects it. So yeah, I can't see um, this being an issue, but um, yeah, I processed three animals so far, three big deer. Uh, did it did it very. Um, do it very fast and uh, it's very it's a very quick um handling knife um it's safe as well you just feel secure with it it feels comfortable there's no hot spots um again you know uh even holding it sort of and, and zipping it this way um you know it's uh, worked a treat uh getting right up here sort of you know into the areas back straps coming around it, it, it was fantastic um Again, about, about two hundred dollars Australian uh, for this knife, um, and again, it comes with that beautiful leather sheath. So traditional guys will like the uh, you know like the sheath. Um, SE a great company, and it's backed with a, a lifetime warranty, similar to uh, Leopold warranty. Um, so no questions asked. If you damage it, break it. They'll give you a new one. So um, yeah, yeah. Again, the specs: three and a half inch blade, about a four and a half inch handle. Um, and it's um, yeah, it's just a cracking little knife. I, as soon as I picked it up, I, I knew I had something special. And if you watch the uh, the SE video with um, Ashley actually uh, talking about the knife he created, this knife, um, you understand you know its pedigree and actually why it works so well. Um, so I might actually even buy another one and get this in G10 offering orange. I'll probably just stick to a Makata. Um, but yeah, so I don't usually buy two of the same knife, but this, this could be an exception to the rule, um, based on it's just, it's, um, just, just the, uh, the use of it. And, uh, yeah, just in case I ever lost it or, uh, you know, I don't, can't see myself breaking it with a, the spine. That's pretty, pretty decent. Um, yeah, I'd hate to, um, not have one of these in my possession, but yeah, so that's a little bit of a close up of it. Actually, the light's good enough for me. I'm just working off my camera as I usually do. So, yeah, it's nice um, wording as well. I love it how it's um, individually numbered. That's uh, that's impressive. More knife companies need to do this. Um, it feels a little bit more, uh, a little bit more custom. You know, a little bit more unique. Just added this here so I can see it in the bushes. Paracord, orange, paracord. Um, another thing is I'd like to see knife companies add, you know, um, grippier handles like um, Mikado or Grippy G10, like Strider G10 is quite grippy, um, or what Cold Steel use on their Pendleton Hunter and their Master Hunter, which is is it's amazing. Um, this is probably uh, um, a little bit more traditional look. Um, I actually prefer the Mikado, even though the Cold Steel. Um, products is it was fantastic with bloodied hands um but i'd like to see the big or some of the other companies in the us i'm not going to name them um which they use their their wood handles um maybe if you add, if you add the wood handles maybe put some grip on there maybe some you know shallow holes somewhere um or go with micarta or a bit of g10 just for uh just for safety sake so you, you wouldn't want to slip off that um a blade in the bush and slice um you know, slice any attendance uh, recipe for disaster that and it has happened and it probably will happen again it can happen on these knives as well you just got to be careful um, but that's just you take that element of uh, risk out of it if you um, add a grip of your handle now this handle here on the um, on the Canadian hunter is not that grippy but it's not slippery either but if you compare them you'll see the difference um, and the Mora uh, this is very, it's, Mora's done an excellent job here. That's really tacky. It's hard plastic here on that bit there, but it's tacky here. So that's an excellent knife. Like those two knives, I could basically uh, use those for the rest of my life um, and never buy another knife. But it's nice to have, uh, you know, the, uh, the Canadian. So again, I'll try that Alaskan. Um, knives of Alaska Yukon. Um, that looks good. It's got the same shape uh, blade. There's this lot of history behind it. Um, I wouldn't even mind trying the Bark River um, Canadian view there, but uh, again, um, I'd love to see them add a little bit, a handle that's maybe like like this one here. Um, you know, love their products, Bark River, amazing knives, but yeah, um, 
there's guys out there like me that want, you know, handles that are slightly different. So maybe, maybe look at that, guys. Um, just this is a suggestion. So, um, but other than that, um, yeah, if you've got a spare 200 um, and you're a deer hunter or a hunter, go out and buy one because it was actually designed uh, for, for the purpose. Um, you could probably use it as a bushcraft knife as well. Um, again, I carry this on the hip, so um, and it works well, very comfortable. Okay, guys, take care.